The Life of T.B. Joshua Temitope Balogun Joshua Born on the 12th of June 1963 and deceased on the 5th of June 2021 Commonly referred to as T.B. Joshua was a Nigerian charismatic pastor, televangelist and philanthropist. He was a leader and founder of the synagogue Church of All Nations, Koan, a Christian mega church that runs the Emmanuel TV television station from Lagos. Joshua was known for his popularity across Africa and Latin America and his social media presence with 3.5 million fans on his Facebook account. His YouTube channel, Emmanuel TV, had over 1 million YouTube subscribers and was the world's most viewed Christian ministry on the platform before it was suspended. Described as the opera of evangelism and YouTube's most popular pastor. Welcome to Drop It Media. In today's video, we'll be going over the life of T.B. Joshua. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe, ring on the bell notification after subscribing, and don't forget you can also like and share our videos on all other social media platforms. Without further ado, let us get back into the video. He was awarded various accolades, notably receiving the Officer of the Order of the Federal Republic by the Nigerian government in 2008 and being voted by the Yoruba Man of the Decade by Pan Yoruba Media Outlet, Heroine Odua. He was called one of Africa's 50 most influential people by Pan African Magazine, The African Report and New African Magazine. As of 2011, according to Forbes, Joshua was Nigerian's third richest pastor, although the claim was immediately denied in a statement by the church. He was known to be controversial and was even blacklisted by the government of Cameroon in 2010. According to Joshua's official biography, unusual circumstances surrounded his birth. He said that he spent 15 months in his mother's womb and narrowly avoided death after a quarry explosion near his house sent rocks through its roof just seven days after his birth. It is also alleged that Joshua's birth was prophesied hundreds of years prior. Joshua, then known as Balogun Francis, attended St. Stephen's Anglican Primary School in Arigidi, Akoko Edo, Nigeria, between 1971 and 1977, but failed to complete one year of secondary school education. In school, he was known as a small pastor because of his love for the Bible. He worked in various casual jobs after his schooling had ended, including carrying chicken waste at a poultry farm. He organized Bible studies for local children and attended evening school during this period. Joshua attempted to join the Nigerian military but was thwarted due to a train breakdown that left him stranded en route to the military academy. He died on the 5th of June in his home in Lagos shortly after his Saturday night teaching. The Synagogue Church of All Nations Joshua wrote that in a heavenly vision he had received the divine anointing and a covenant from God to start his ministry. Following this, Joshua founded the ministry organization, the Synagogue Church of All Nations. According to the organization, more than 15,000 members attend its weekly Sunday service. Visitors from outside Nigeria are accommodated in accommodation blocks constructed at the church. The Guardian reported that the Skoan attracts more weekly attendees than the combined number of visitors to Bob Buckingham Palace and the Tower of London. The Squan's popular services have also resulted in an enormous boost for local businesses and hoteliers. Despite Joshua's popularity, the church only has a branch in Ghana, Joshua stating that it is not yet time for him to have branches worldwide as it will be too much for my character. Regular Tourism the Squan has been described as Nigeria's biggest tourist attraction and the most visited destination by religious tourists in West Africa, with thousands of foreigners flocking to attend the church weekly services. Figures released by the Nigerian Immigration Services indicated that 6 out of every 10 foreign travelers coming into Nigeria are bound for the Squan, a fact discussed in Zimbabwean Parliament when addressing the economic potentials of religious tourism. This day, newspaper reported that about 2 million local and inbound tourists visit the Skoan annually. The church's popularity has led to an increase in flight routes to Lagos from several African countries in 2013.
Joshua's contributions to Nigeria's religious tourism was highlighted when the cleric hinted at the possibility of relocating his ministry to Israel during a Sunday service. The announcement proved controversial with several prominent Nigerians urging him to remain in the country, citing the economic setback Nigeria would likely experience through his potential relocation. Skoran claims regular occurrences of divine miracles. Several hundred Nigerians and international visitors come to the Skoran each week to register for the prayer lines where the visitors are prayed over by Joshua. Skoran has published numerous videos claiming to document the healings of incurable dis disabilities and illness such as HIV AIDS, blindness, and open wounds. Spiritual healing at the Skoan has been the subject of several media reports, including a mention in Time magazine, an associated press interview, and an article by Foreign Policy, detailing the tendency of Nigerians to seek spiritual help due to insufficient medical facilities. A huge debate was stirred within Nigeria when the father of abducted school girl, S. Ororo, stated his intention to take his daughter to TB Joshua for prayers, following a release. Similarly, a leaked report stating the intention of Nigerians embattled former petroleum minister Diazani Alice in Madweke to visit Joshua for spiritual support in a battle against breast cancer, a lycited controversy. Now let us talk about the anointing water. Many have also claimed to be healed through anointing water that has been prayed over by Joshua and given to those who are not able to physically attend his church in Lagos. Others claim they were protected from deadly incidents because they had the water with them. In 2013, four people died in a stampede in Joshua's Ghanaian branch when an unadvertised service where it was being distributed drew huge crowds far beyond the church's capacity, bringing Ghana's capital city Accra almost to a standstill. Joshua also made headlines when he claimed his anointing water could cure the deadly disease Ebola. He subsequently sent 4,000 bottles of the water alongside a cash gift of $50,000 to the Ebola-stricken nation of Sierra Leone. This came after Lagos State Health official visited Joshua, requesting him to publicly discourage Ebola victims from visiting his church for prayers. A Sierra Leonean politician later claimed the water helped stop the spread of the disease and cured several Ebola victims. Alleged exorcism. Squan is also known for the purported deliverance of those allegedly possessed by evil spirits during its services. Strange occurrences have been reported during these deliverance prayers, including in case of a South African girl who allegedly cried blood and a Liberian man who began behaving like a dog. A young man allegedly delivered from a homosexual demon at the Synagogue Church of All Nations also attracted widespread media attention, as did the transformation of a Paraguayan transvestite. After deliverance, those involved often confessed the atrocities which the evil spirit allegedly pushed them to engage in, such as prostitution, armed robbery, internet fraud, and human trafficking. Now let us move on to celebrity deliverance. Ghanaian human rights lawyer Kwabla Senanu claimed that he was delivered from a spiritual problem. Similarly, Ghanaian musician Denise Williams said she was delivered from a demon that had pushed her to become a drug addict and a suicider. Veteran Nigeria Nollywood actress Camilla Mbarekwe was also said to have been delivered at the Skoan. Popular Nollywood actor G. Mike also said he received deliverance at the Skoan, the video of the event subsequently going viral. A video of Kenya Olympic athlete Messi Cherono receiving deliverance through Joshua's prayer attracted widespread attention in Kenya. She subsequently testified in the company of her husband how the evil spirit had negatively affected her young marriage and career. Moving on to foreign visits. He traveled to Korea, Singapore, Indonesia, Australia, Colombia, Mexico, Peru, and Paraguay to hold crusades. He also visited Israel to receive a humanitarian award from Zaka and visit biblical sites. His miracle crusade in Cali, Colombia, in July 2014 was allegedly attended by 100,000 people and held in the Estadio 
Olimpico Pascua Guerrero. He traveled to the iconic Estadio Azteca in Mexico, which was allegedly attended by 200,000 people over two days in May 2015. Joshua's two-day visit to Estadio Monumenta U in Lima, Peru, attracted nearly 100,000 people in September 2016 making headlines in local Peruvian media. In August 2017, Joshua held a crusade in Paraguay at Estadio de Francenso del Chaco. His visits caused a media storm when the Paraguayan parliament approved that the cleric be awarded the National Order of Merit, the country's highest honor usually reserved only for its own citizens. Testimonies from those who alleged they were healed through Joshua's prayers at the crusade made headlines in local media. In June 2019, Joshua held a two-day event at the amphitheater of Mount Precipice in Nazareth, Israel, the historic hometown of Jesus Christ. The event was the subject of intense media scrutiny. Local religious officials told their followers to boycott the event and several small protests were held calling for its cancellation. However, an estimated 15,000 traveled from over 50 nations to attend the event, significantly boosting local tourism. A Forbes blogger estimated that Joshua spent 20 million US dollars on education, healthcare, and rehabilitation programs for former Niger Delta militants. There is also a rehabilitation program for militants from Nigeria's volatile Niger Delta region repentant armed robbers and sex workers who came to the church for deliverance. Joshua went to the aid of several communities in distress, notably providing two transformers to a local community after the house was burned beyond repair. He donated over 26 million naira towards restoring electricity and putting an end to over two years of power outage in four councils in Akoko area of Ondo State. The cleric has additionally made several large donations to the police force in Nigeria, Ghana, and Colombia. The SCOAN has a scholarship program which caters for the academic needs of students in their thousands, ranging from primary to tertiary education. In 2012, Joshua sponsored the Nigerian students doing a PhD in Oxford University. With Nigerian media reporting, she received £100,000 from the church. He also gave a scholarship to a young Matuana to study at Harvard Law School in America. After the 2010 Haiti earthquake, Joshua sent a team of medical personnel and humanitarian workers to the affected area, establishing a field hospital called Clinic Emmanuel. He additionally sent support to nations such as the Philippines, India, and Ghana in the wake of varying natural disasters. The Emmanuel TV team also assisted victims of the earthquake that struck the nation of Ecuador in April 2016, providing over 500,000 words of humanitarian aid. Joshua funded the building and running of a, a school in Lahore, Pakistan named Emmanuel School. He also rebuilt a school in a rural area destroyed by the 2016 Ecuador earthquake traveling to Ecuador for the opening of the school in 2017, June. Several groups of Nigerians attempting illegal travel to Europe through Libya have been supported at the SCOAN following their deportation from the North African nation with only the clothes on their backs. Stories of the harsh conditions they encountered and Joshua's subsequent assistance made headlines in several local newspapers. In 2009, Joshua started a football club, My People FC, as part of efforts to help the youths, two members of the team played the Nigerian's Golden Eaglets in 2009 FIFA on the 17 World Cup. Sani Emmanuel, who apparently lived in the school for several years, was Nigerian's top scorer and tournament MVP. Emmanuel and his colleague Ogenyi Onazi signed professional contracts with SS Lazio, Onazi a key player for the Nigerian senior team, the Super Eagles. WBO International Lights middleweight boxing champion King Davison, Emenogu, said that Joshua had financially supported him throughout his career and purportedly prophesied that he would be a world boxing champion. Joshua was involved in the meeting of the family of the late president of Liberia, Samuel Doe, with the former warlord Prince Yomi Johnson, 
who was responsible for those deaths. During this meeting, the family publicly forgave Johnson, who said it was through Joshua's prayers that he stopped drinking alcohol and turned to Christianity. The cleric also played a prominent role in reconciling broken homes and restoring families torn apart by false accusations. In recognition of his humanitarian activities, he was awarded a national honor by the Nigerian government in 2008, as well as receiving a letter of appreciation from the United Nations. He was further honored as an ambassador of peace by the Arewa Youth Forum, a predominantly Muslim organization as well as being recognized with an award of excellence by Zaka, Israel's primary rescue and recovery volunteer services. Squan claims that Joshua has successfully predicted events in the lives of individuals who attend his church services as well as worldwide events, including a purported prophecy of Michael Jackson's death and the outcome of two African Cup of Nations final matches which were won by Zambia and Nigeria, respectively. He has been voted by the public among the most famous prophets. His prophecy about the impending death of an African presidency was widely reported in the African press. Joshua's followers believes the prophecy concerned the former president of Malawi, Bingu Wa Motarika, who died in 2012, aged 78. First rumors spreading using Joshua's name are known to have caused widespread panic in communities, affected sporting events, music concerts, and led people to stop using social networks. When Amza Hal Mustafa, the chief security officer of former Nigerian president Sani Abacha, was released after 11 years of imprisonment, his first post of call was to Joshua's church in acknowledgement of a prophecy the cleric allegedly gave him when Abacha was still in power. Critics argue that Joshua's predictions are too vague. The alleged MH370 prophecy. Scoran released a video claiming that TB Joshua predicted that Malaysia analyzed MH370 events. The prophecy received a lot of attention on social media and its accompanying YouTube video amassed over 1 million views. Several terrorist attacks perpetrated by ISIS, Al Qaeda, affiliates, and Al Shabaab militants have allegedly been predicted by Joshua, including the November 2015 Paris attacks, the Garissa University College attack in Kenya, the Ohoaguda Hotel siege in Burkina Faso, and the 2016 Brussels bombings. It also claimed that he predicted the Boston bombing attacks in America. Joshua alleged prophecy in April 2016 that an impending terror attack would befall Ghana made national headlines in the West African nation and led the national police to issue a statement calling for the general public to be calm and vigilant. 600 foreigners reportedly cancelled their visits to Ghana in the wake of the statement. Days later, a captured Malayan terrorist confirms that his group had planned to target Ghana. Moving on to the US election prophecy. Joshua incorrectly predicted that Hillary Clinton would win the 2016 US election. After this prophecy failed to materialize, with Donald Trump winning the election, Joshua stated that he was referring to Clinton's win in the popular vote, and any misinterpretation was due to a lack of spiritual understanding. A video of Joshua projecting the military of an undisclosed Southern African nation embarrassing, killing, or capturing a president or vice president or the first lady of the nation surfaced on social media after the statement, which was made and recorded in August 2014, was interpreted as a prophecy of the 2017 Zimbabwean coup d'etat against Robert Mugabe. Now moving on to coronavirus. Joshua claimed that the COVID-19 would disappear globally on March 2020-27. A BBC African journalist once questioned whether Joshua was the most powerful man in Africa due to his alleged influence in the African political sphere. Do you have an answer to this question? Kindly leave it in the comment section below. Days after the late John Arta Mills became president of Ghana in 2009, his first port of call was Joshua's church for a thanksgiving service where he revealed the cleric had accurately prophesied his ascension to power and specific details retail relating to his narrow victory over Nana Kufuado.
Joshua was a regular visitor to Ghana during Mill's early presidency and allegedly organized prayer warriors to be praying in Osu Kasu. Malawi Joshua Moch publicized prophecy concerning the death of Malawian President Bingu Motarika garnered intense media attention and was subsequently the subject of a Malawian government inquiry as his successor, Dress Banda. Is a devotee of the cleric. Banda claimed Joshua's prayer healed her after he suffered a stroke and regularly visited Joshua in Nigeria while she was a head of state. Tanzania Joshua played the role of a peacekeeper or maker in the aftermath of the Tanzania elections in 2015, visiting the country to meet and hold reconciliatory talks with President John Magufuli, a member of his church, and opposition leader Edward Luwasa. Commentators acknowledged his visits significantly reduced tension in the country after the election which the opposition party alleged were fraught with irregularities. Liberia Joshua was a key influence in the former Liberian warlord Senator Prince Yomini Johnson's decision to endorse the candidacy of George Weah for presidency in 2017 Liberian elections. His endorsement came days after the two were spotted publicly together in Skuan, a visit that caused a media storm in Liberia, whereas main opponent and former vice president Joseph Boaki also alleged requested to visit Joshua in lieu of the elections. We are eventually won the elections to become Liberia's 25th president. South Sudan In November 2019, Joshua visited South Sudan where he was received by the president, Salva Kel Mayadid. He led Mayadid and his cabinet in prayers for peace at the nation's presidential palace in Juba and called on leaders to overcome their differences in a message broadcast on South Sudan state television. In February 2013, South Sudan finally formed the unity government with peace brokered between Mayadid and rival leader Rick Macha. Moving on to Emmanuel TV. Emmanuel TV, the school and television station, broadcasts 24 7. Its Sunday service are broadcast live. Joshua's programs also air weekly on a number of local television stations across Africa. It is booted on DSTV and Go TV in November 2015, as well as start time in February 2016. In, the, in its profile on Joshua, the BBC described him as Nigeria's best televangelist. Emmanuel TV's motto is changing lives, changing nation, changing the world. The station is also known for its catchphrase, distance is not a barrier, encouraging viewers to pray along with TV Joshua by touching the screen. There are several claims of people receiving miraculous healing through these prayers, including popular Nollywood actress Tonto D.K., who said John's Joshua's prayers ended a 14-year smoking addiction. Joshua earned a reputation for not focusing on prosperity gospel and Emmanuel TV is known as one of the few Christian channels that does not encourage in fundraising on air. The YouTube channel Emmanuel TV YouTube channel had over 1.8 million subscribers and 400 million views before it was closed in April 2021 after allegation of hate speech. It had been the world's most viewed Christian ministry on the platform. Google ranked one of Emmanuel's TV YouTube video as the fourth most viewed clip ever within Nigeria. Now let us move on to criticism and controversy. Joshua has many critics and was known to be controversial. Now relationship with other pastors. Joshua has been publicly condemned by several prominent pastors within Nigeria, his most vocal critic being Pastor Chris Okotie, who described him as the son of the devil. The Christian Association of Nigeria and Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria have both acknowledged Joshua is not a member of either organization and denounced him as an impostor. Enoch Adeboye David Ayodepo, Ayo Oritesh Jafo, Paul Adeferizim and Matthew Ashimowolo are among the pastors who publicly denounced Joshua as the disgraced American megachurch leader Ted Agard. He was blacklisted in Cameroon. 
He was blacklisted by the government of Cameroon in 2010 and termed the son of the devil. Rumors of a visit by Joshua to Zimbabwe in 2012 led to an intense national debate, culminating with pastors and politicians strongly objecting. HIV death in London In 2011, several media houses in the UK reported at least three people in London with HIV died after they stopped taking life-saving drugs on the advice of their pastors. The HIV Prevention Charity African Health Policy Network believe that Kohan may be one of those involved in such practices, although the jury in question have no demonstrable link to the Kohan. The BBC quoted the Kohan as, say, as saying, no, we do not ask people to stop taking their medications. Private Jets On the 14th of September 2015, it was reported that Joshua secretly purchased a 60 million Gulfstream G550 private jet. These rumors were dismissed as false by media aid of Joshua. Boko Haram Confession A self confessed member of the Islamic sect Boko Haram came to the squad in March 2014, alleged with plans to bomb the church. According to him, it was Joshua's prayers that prevented the plan and later compelled him to confess. The subsequent clip of the confession went viral on YouTube and proved very controversial. A group known as the Movement of Accountability and Good Governance has called for the investigation of the incidents based on the claims that were made. Collapse of the Guest House Main Article 2014 Synagogue Church Building Collapse On the 12th of September 2014, a guest house collapsed in the squan's premises in Lagos, killing at least 115 people, 84 of them South Africans. Controversy has continued to swirl around the circumstances that led to the collapse, with the former Nigerian Minister of Aviation, Femi Fani Kayode, alleging Nigerian's intelligence agency blew up the building. Now, Panama Papers Nigerian's Premium Times newspaper stated that Joshua incorporated a company called Chilon Consultancy Limited in the British Virgin Island in June 2006. Based on reports stemming from the Panama Papers leak, Joshua immediately denied his involvement, stating on Facebook, I am not a businessman and I have no business whatsoever. What God has given me is more than enough. Threats by Muslim Cleric a prominent Nigerian Muslim cleric, Sheikh Usani Yusuf Mabera, threatened to drag Joshua to court for describing Jesus Christ as God. Now, what do you have to say about that? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Joshua was married to Evelyn Joshua and had three children. He died on the 5th of June after one of his evening services in Lagos, Nigeria. He was aged 57. The cause of death was not immediately disclosed, but family sources said his remains had been deposited at the morgue and an autopsy would be performed forthwith. Mr. Joshua reigned for over three decades as a fiery preacher on television, using his platform to attract a large number of Christians from across the world. Emmanuel TV run by Mr. Joshua Skoan is one of Nigeria's largest Christian broadcast stations. Available worldwide via digital and terrestrial switches. In 2014, his church was at the center of a multinational investigation following a section of his church headquarters in Lagos collapsed, leaving dozens killed and many more injured. Mr. Joshua denied allegations of negligence and a trial over the incident was still on the way prior to his demise. The squad released the following statements confirming the development. Prophet T.B. Joshua, June 12, 1963 to June 5, 2021. Surely the Sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. Amos 3 7. On Saturday, 5, 2021, Prophet T.B. Joshua spoke during the Emmanuel TV Partners meeting. Time for everything. Time to come here for prayer and time to return home after the service. God has taken his servant, Prophet T.B. Joshua, home, as it should be by divine will. His last moments on earth were spent in the service of God. This is what he was born for, lived for, and died for. 
As Prophet T.B. Joshua says, the greatest way to use life is to spend it on something that will outlive it. Prophet T.B. Joshua leaves the legacy of service and sacrifice to God's kingdom that is living for generations yet unborn. The Synagogue Church of All Nations and Emmanuel TV family appreciate your love, prayers and concerns at this time and request a time of privacy for the family. Here are Prophet T.B. Joshua's last words. Watch and pray. One life for Christ is all we have. One life for Christ is so dear. Now, this will mark the end of today's video. You've heard the biography of Prophet T.B. Joshua. If there's any information you think we must have or what we might have left out, kindly let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching today's video. Peace.